Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And once again, Noah, our customers have come through for us with this chill water pump flow problems. Is it the pump or is it the motor? The classic question. Well, you and I are both from the Navy, so we've had this. There was a constant battle between the mechanics and the electricians. Where's the problem? Battle of rates. Well, we always know where the problem was. It was always in the pump. Definitely the pump. <laughs> it's never with the motor. But we'll see. We'll see how that holds out. How is your How is your week so far? It's a Friday today, which it is It is nice. a Friday. It's a blessing. Are we in hurricane season yet? We are in hurricane season, however. We have a Sahara dust over us. So. It is sunny It's and amazing warm. how it makes it that far over the ocean plants right over us it's unbelievable. keeps us dry for a while anyways until but it only takes one hurricane as they say <laughs> to have a bad outcome so anyways noah getting on with the story here this is the f- 1000 horsepower 4160 volt 295 rpm so a lot of poles in this motor it is yeah this uh, this is a very slow very large motor and to find out the poles you can always just do that old remember in power school 120 days of fun is equal to nuclear power that's right and 120 sure. times frequency is yeah. equal to n times p so if you're solving for P, you divide uh, the 7200 by speed, which we know the speed here, and then you get your poles. Right, and in North America, it's usually just a simple way, 7200 divided by right. speed. But in the uh, you know Navy nuclear, you always had to have some kind of acronym. <laughs> acronym yeah, everything for something. is an acronym. The, the best was 120 days of fun is equal to <laughs> nuclear power. That sure was. <laughs> I don't know where they got that because yeah. it's like not fun. All kinds of words come up with besides fun. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's so many other words for that <laughs> F that you could pull it in there. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so they installed an MTAP in February of 2022, and, you know, they wanted to start testing, and, and they did it for safety, right? Oh, yeah. You know, when it comes to MTAPs, uh, safety, reliability, and accuracy, I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with those type of installations. And then a few months later, they started to see some changes, but we'll get into that. Uh, but we're going to first show you some of these first tests here in February. Uh, and I, what pops out is there's already a, a band alarm around one of those peaks. Yeah, you could quickly, based on the on terminology, and, and there's a little bit of homework that goes into these peaks. You know, knowing the number of veins, first of all, and that's not usually... Um, uncommon to find you can find number of veins you got to figure out the slip get with your motor. mechanics right this Absolutely. is where vibration and, and electrical can work together even supply sometimes you go through the records you know they have a record of that you know the better the birth certificate the more information but if you know the slip and you know the number of veins it's not hard to find vein pass frequency and then uh, try to establish a band alarm around that to trend it sure and and we've done that so Moving on here, we have current signature analysis, which we're looking for rotor bar issues here, pole pass sidebands, and we don't really see anything. And we see that the noise threshold is below all the alarm levels. Now, maybe that at 52 hertz, that's vein pass, because that, uh, that's right at that 8 hertz mark. I would agree with you. I would say absolutely that's showing through on the spectral plot. And at minus 80 dB down, that's a very clean signal. Yeah, very clean. And current looks pretty good, too. No real changes here. You could also do inrush startup to look at this, uh, uh, like 30 seconds of current as process analysis tool. Agreed. The RMS envelope of inrush startup is actually a, a very good tool at trending modulations of machine train or electrical. It's a, just a great view. Yeah, so now we don't really see anything. So everything is looking good. That's February. And now a few months later, we start to see a heavy noise level here in, in uh, September of 2022. What? What could go on? So we, we define this as broadband, you know, energy. And it's you can see there's no specific frequency that you're going to pull out of here. It's just frequencies everywhere. And then so you look, you're look, you thinking two things. This is possibly some kind of noise intrusion of the circuitry of the area. So is there are there's a welding cables sitting mm. across them? What's going on here? Um, or is it actually something that more related to the machine train or mechanical? And now we're, that we're dealing with pump, the first thing that comes to mind is a suspicion of, ca- of cavitation. Yeah, like if there was a VFD call close by when you installed it but you would get that from day one day one this is one of those that it was fine and now it's not right so check to verify there's nothing going on but then you have to go pretty quickly to uh, is this mechanical what's causing this modulation in there so then we come over here and we see current signature analysis it's 
elevated up into the alarm or cautionary Yeah, this really makes area. analysis a little more difficult, right? So where we used to have that nice, clean 80 dB down, now the spectral plot is flooded with frequencies that are just filling those bins up. So it's not as optimal an analysis. It makes it much more difficult to see early indications of problems. Right. And then we also see excessive current swings in here. Before it was pretty smooth. Now they're getting 20, 30 amp current swings. Yeah, from steady eddy, which is pretty common with a with a centrifugal pump, to now what looks like almost like a, a mill. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much variation at the at the outskirts of the time domain of, of current. So what you know what what can cause some of this? So they. They thought, well, it sounded, it looked like a pump issue because they did do some MCE testing on the motor itself, and it was pretty normal. All the resistance to ground measurements, phase-to-phase -phase resistance measurements, capacitance to ground, uh, polarization index, everything was normal on that motor. And so when they clear the electrical, as they did, as you just mentioned, uh, it always goes, once you've cleared the electrical, you know, which always has to be done first, unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, then you fall back to the mechanical. So they're immediately thinking, okay, there's probably some kind of flow problem associated with the pump, uh, which a lot of times if the veins are starting to fail or if there's damage on the veins, you can start to have flow issues. And that's what they're ge gearing towards. Or cavitation. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, yes, cavitation is something there, which a lot of times can not guarantee be the pump, but mess, but again, it's a flow-related problem. Flow-related issue. So they sent it off. They bring it back. Now it's a little better, but it's still not great. Yeah, even though they you know they clean up the clearances, they do everything they can do that you know, on a standard refurbishment of a pump. This is not what we expect after that. So what we've done is we've cleared the electrical. Now we, assuming that the shop, uh, you know, the pump shop did their job, which you can only expect they will. Uh, they've cleared the pump, assuming you know good install, good reinstallation. Um, mm -hmm. What's left? Well, now it's 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 now we're looking at machine train or actual yeah. flow. What's all in the, the system? Exactly. Essentially, what's all in the system that could create something? And so what they did is they're like, wait a second. There's filters that go prior to getting into the pump. Let's check the filter system. And this is what they found, uh, heavy algae debris uh, in the filter. And we've seen this before, we right, have, with, yes. with utilities. There's a case study that's out on our YouTube channel to where when the pumps are secured, all the sediment tends to settle. And then when you activate both pumps again on, it just takes all that s settled sediment and just plugs up the filter. Yeah, this is like a haven for alligators or manatees, one of the two. I, I would not want to be the one having to go in there. That's definitely, you always say let the new guy start the motor. This is definitely a new guy job. Agreed. Hey, go out. Come on, clean that up. <laughs> come on. Adios that algae there, buddy. <laughs> because nobody who's <laughs> been around for 30, 40 years, like, well, they know not to be around when that gets that's open. Right. They're smart enough to say, well, oh, yeah, that's a experience common. And then we also find wood, you know, who, uh, how that got in there. Who knows? Yeah. Well, the, the, the word that we heard was there was, you know, remaining is like scaffolding remains. And so mm -hmm. this is like part of the wood, part of the scaffolding that was in place to, you know, reinstall the, or the initial installation because this isn't, this isn't new. This is old stuff. Yeah. So between the algae and the scaffolding remains. Uh, it's just creating a lot of turbulence. A lot of, and flow, re uh, basically flow prevention, mm -hmm. right? So when you can't get water through the pump naturally that is going to create a drop in pressure air bubbles are going to form and that's the cavitation that that you yeah, expect. you lose flow i mean i know that uh, having a pool pump and you have a pool pump you know when those uh oh, yeah impellers get uh clogged you don't have the f the f the flow that you want and now this is after so everything came back down so they still have the band alarm around the eight hertz mark for vein pass frequency but it's really down in the dirt now it really is and a lot of people are saying well you know why did the if the pump was fine how does cavitation created from algae and pr flow prevention create such a frequency well keep in mind that that regardless of the start you know the certain m anomalies can excite other frequencies and so in this situation we're pretty sure that the flow problem that was identified uh, was exciting the vein pass frequency. So at least now we've got alarm levels that we know if it happens again, we'll be ready for it. Yeah, so it's an gr excellent trending tool. And here's a nice 3D view of the problem. We install the MTAP on the far right. You can see 11 February of 2022. And then problem comes into play in September. October, we sent it out between September and October comes back, still not right exactly, and then come time uh, to test it again in 23 after the debris was settled and fixed out of there and cleaned, we see pretty clean 
that's a full circle, right? And talk about the confidence builder in the technology and, and, and the early in, indications. Right. So if you're new to the technology and you go to your management and say, well, this is what happened, management has to look at that and say, wow, now you're visually, you're putting data. It's not just a feel anymore. There's hard data that you can make decisions off of. What do we say? Uh, Quantity and quality. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Quantity and quality. Boy, that's a combination you want, right? I love those words. <laughs> <laughs> you want that. quantitative and qualitative. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, no real cost savings here, but I guess the savings are, one, you, gra- you gain credibility. Uh, so the next time you say, listen, there's an issue, and here's the data to, su- to support why we think there's an issue, then you're more believed. Absolutely, and think in the future where you don't have to have the new guy don the diving gear and go down there and clean that mess up. Yeah. You know, knowing what's happening allows, and, and think about the cost of sending a pump in for refurbishment when it may not have been necessary. You know, these are all things that, uh, looking ahead, are big savings and, and, and confidence builders. Right, and the fact that maybe there was a reduction of flow to the motors or, or to the, through the pump so you weren't being as efficient as you could if you needed to run that utility at 100% power, Maybe you right. didn't have the capacity to chill that steam without the flow through the pump. So uh, you know, a lot of things that are not monetized but are still valuable to the overall process. So, Noah, that kind of brings us to the end of that case study. And as always, we like to thank you. Thank you, Noah, for your intellect. Always enjoy it. And uh, thank you, the audience, for, uh, for joining us. And uh, hopefully you got a little something out of today to make your tomorrow a little bit easier, right? Because that's the whole goal of this. And if you have a case study that you'd like to share with us or a tip of the week or, or some wisdom that you think that is lacking, please let us know. Give us a call or give us, send us an email. And until we talk to you guys again, you guys stay safe and you have a great day.